Today I would like to share with you on the subject, have peace in the in Christ. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, the Son, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come before you to worship you. Lord, we come and praise and worship you because you are a rock our salvation, you are our help in time of need. Dear Jesus, you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We come before you to praise and give thanks to you. Lord, we once again ask that your precious blood cleanse from all our iniquities. Lord, forgive the sins that we have dead on the outside as well as in the inside. May your blood once again cleanse us. May the Holy Spirit be with us. May your Holy Spirit be roaming and right in our hearts. Speak to us, Lord. Comfort those who need your comfort. And as well as heal those who are brokenhearted. Encourage those who need your encouragement and support those, uplift those who need your help. Even to the point that those who need to be rebuked, me, you rebuke them, Lord. May your Holy Spirit speak to each one of us. May your grace and, and bless the rest of the worship service. Open up our spiritual ears that we may hear your words. May we keep your words in our heart and so that we may not sin against you. Thank you, Lord, and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right in this current society that we live in, we often hear the natural as well as catastrophes and calamities then that happen to humans. Right, two weeks ago, then in Taipei, then there were they actually suffered twice then earthquakes then uh, in the span of thirteen hours. And also a while back then, I also hear a South African mother then killed her own four children. At the end of time, then it's so normal in a way, it becomes so natural then that we hear all these natural calamities then, as well as the harm then brought forth by men. If, even to the point where we go out there to share the gospel, we will come across the people asking us, We will often come across the people asking them, If there is God, then, if God is a loving God, then, why all these sufferings that indeed happening to us? We all know our Heavenly Father loves us. Let me ask you, what do what do you think that you 
will consider as a loving father. 有时候我们听到人说，你怎么教导孩子的呢 ？Even to the point we come across people asking them, how did you parent it or trained it, taught your son? 所以我想，因为好的父亲会懂得教导孩子。A good father will know then how to discipline his children. 当孩子遇到困难的时候，父亲会帮助他，会鼓励他，会为他打气。Even to the point where the children then have problems, then the father will be always behind the children, not only to encourage as well to help out. 当孩子遇到困难的时候，父亲会帮助他。那当孩子做错的时候呢？ If a children need help, then the parent, father will always be there to help out. But how about it if children have happen to did wrong? 父亲会跟小孩说，你这样做做不对，为什么不对？ So the father tend to ask the children, tell the children that you committed the wrongdoing, and do you know why that it's wrong? 有些父母甚至会又骂又打孩子，是不是？ Well, there are some parents then that. Use for corporal punishment and in a way that rebuke and as well as hit the children. But in America, here we cannot hit children. But here in America, then does this does not apply? Then. That many mothers also in that group will beat their children. The mother will step in then and punish the children. The children will feel the father's authority. So here, then the children then will now then turn to find the stern or、uh, discipline of the children of the father. When children are small, the parents need to train them. When the children, well, they are still young, then the parents then will train the little children. In this growing process, children will learn to be independent. So right in the process of growing, then the children tend to learn to be independent. Our heavenly Father is the same way. He 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 is the same way. Prior to conversion, then to become Christians, when they come across problems, suffering in life, they also will learn to 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 learn And to the point moved by the Holy Spirit, then they will turn, repent, and turn to God. But to those who are already Christians, no matter what, if they come across problems, but then they trust in the Lord, then. They will always grow spiritually. They will more and more learn to trust the Lord's limitations and their own limitations. And to the point that they have experienced God, they will come to realize that how limited they were. Then, and to the point that how God then is the great, an infinite God. There is a saying called "the suffering is the blessing of the Lord." How we often say suffering then is actually a blessing in disguise. John chapter sixteen verse thirty three. Here, 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 This is the biblical verse, and I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John fourteen thirty three, thirty three. At the beginning, here it says, "These things 
Here it started, this verse it started with, with I told you these things. What are they referring to as these things? It's actually the very last night when Jesus then spent the night with his disciples. These words of Christ is his old counsel then to comfort his disciples. Jesus told his disciples, I go then all for the purpose of preparing the place for you. And all these were recorded on John chapter 14 then up until 6 chapter 1632. <laughs> Here it says, so that you may have peace in me. So it's actually Jesus Christ himself, the peace he has that he wanted to grant to all his disciples. At the same time, Jesus wanted to grant or give this peace then to everyone who belongs to him. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I live with you, my peace I give you. I do not give, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. And these peace comes from Jesus Christ. Normally, you know, for the commoners, when they talk about peace, then it's actually the circumstantial peace. If there's happened surrounding us and there's no harmful things that happen, we consider that as peace. How often times we say, peace be with you in your going out and coming in. Isn't it? And this kind of peace, then, what is the worldly people referring to? And this kind of peace changes then with, in, with the circumstances. And these things won't last. This is the peace then, that the worldly people are referring to. This is totally different than from the peace that, that Jesus is referring to in John 16.33. The first point that I would like to share with you, this kind of peace that is not outside peace that, circumstantial peace, that, but it is the peace within us, the peace of mind. The peace is right inside our hearts. So no matter how the circumstances change, God peace always dwells inside of us. May the peace of the Lord and always be with us. The, uh, the original text then, of this piece of Christ then, yeah. is called Shalom. So normally, the 
servants of God that before they share the words of God that they always give this kind of peace greeting to the congregants. But for the Jewish people upon meeting each other, so they will greet each other that may the peace be with you. So just like we Chinese then whenever we meet each other then however we tend to ask, have you eaten? How about the westernness when they meet each other? Hi, how are you? But isn't it we question often like, with like to greet each other by saying the may the peace of the Christ and be with you. Right in Paul's letters, then when did he ever mention peace? Oftentimes, it's actually at the end of his epistles, letters. It's actually a blessing by the writer. At the same time, giving this kind of blessing then to every reader of the words of God. So because as we read the word of God, then God will speak to us through his words. And God will also use his words then to comfort us. And that is, may the peace of the Lord be with you. John 16.33 In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus didn't promise those believers saying that after you believe in me, you no longer have any trouble or suffering. And he did not also mention that Christians then will be able to avoid all this trouble. So we have to be clear with this thing. In other words, then no matter even after we believe in Christ Jesus, we still have to go through trouble. Even Jesus Christ himself, while on earth, and he himself then also experienced, go, went through sufferings and troubles. As we all know, Jesus came to this world then and born in a manger. And also born in a poor family. When he was called the flock and whipped them by, by his enemies then, but he never complained to God. And he did not also put the blame on those people that came to catch him. And he did not then even have his anger upon the people. When other, his enemies cursed, for, uh, cursed at him then, and yet on the other hand, he blesses, he, he blessed his enemies. Even to the point when he was nailed on the cross and he even asked them that the God the Father to forgive them. He even prayed to the God the Father and said, Lord, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. As we all know, in the Old Testament, the same way that 
Joseph was wrongly accused. And how he was sold then by his very own brothers. Even the close one, the closest relatives then betrayed him. And to the point sent to jail. Right in man's perspective, he went through so much troubles. But yet, in the midst of all these sufferings, he remained to trust God. He still revered, honored God. And to the point at the ultimately at the end, then he became a governor in Egypt. And also another Old Testament biblical character that went through so much. Do you recall who that is? Job. Right in the midst of one night, and all his children died. He lost all his possessions and wealth. And to the point that he even has those skin, this boils them right in his skin. Right in the eyes of men. It's in the eyes of men that he might he might better off dead than, than alive. So and to the point his very own wife and even asked him to let go of God then and just go and die. But yet we thank God Job remained faithful to God. Being Christian, we need to also know that the root causes of suffering. So the second point I would like to share with you is the root causes of suffering. So because then our forefathers and Adam and Eve then they have sinned then. So since every human, the moment they're born then, they already know how to sin. So no matter what, little children then, even though they're very tender of tender age then, they already know how to lie. And if it's some children, then right in their acts, then their very action, they also committed wrongdoing. And how oftentimes the parents of the children, who the troublesome children, then the, the parents will be called in then by the parents, uh, by the teachers. I just hope you do not have this type of children. If you happen to have such children, then we parents then need to truly spend time in prayer, praying for our children. Because of the sins of men, then, that's why then it has this curse on us. Generation curse. The very, uh, there's a type of in the Ten Commandments, one of them, it says, Our God is a jealous God, so we should not carve any idols or images and worship those idols. Mm-hmm. 
here says on Exodus chapter 20, verses 5 to 6, You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to third and fourth generation of those who hate me. 第六节神说,爱我所有诫命的,我必向他们发慈爱直到千代。but then there's, it says on verse 6 then, but to those who show love to me then, I will the same way show love to a gener thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. And if you haven't already believed in Jesus, the Holy Spirit will certainly enlighten you. The same way the Holy Spirit enlightened me. And let us see then our very own sins. Then we need to resolve our own sins. Bring all the, our sins then before God then and ask God to help us. Through the biblical truth, then we will be able to come out victoriously. We also need the help of the Holy Spirit. Become the strength of our life. And third, the the causes of suffering. Yes, at times the Lord God will allow the Satan then to tempt us. It's just like Job. Job will be a, was a very good example. The Satan came to attack them and tempt tempted Job. The same is true, Satan will attack us as well as tempt us. But we should not be in fear. Because God has given us this promise in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. God's promise of 1 Corinthians 10, 13, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Let us read together this verse. We thank God for His words. May we always keep His words and remember His words in our hearts. As we all know, when man was seriously ill, we probably need to know then why we have this kind of sickness. So we need to know the cause then, the root cause of our sickness. Probably we did not take good care of our own bodies. Who knows, there are times it will be also the discipline of God. Or probably some other reasons. Who knows, at times it might be the attack of the Satan. 
Antuna, or probably there are times that we are being bounded, binded by our sins. 这些是我们需要来到神的面前去寻求神。All these things that we need to come before the Lord and seek after God. 求问神 ，and ask God. 那在约翰福音十六章三十三节，耶稣很清楚的告诉我们说。在世上，你们有苦难。And on this verse, John chapter sixteen thirty three, Jesus clearly says that in this world you will have trouble. 但你们可以放心。But here, here's the change that he says. But take heart. 为什么？因为主耶稣已经胜了世界。Why we can take heart is all because Jesus has overcome the world. So we don't need to fear. That's why we don't need to fear. Because to go through sickness and pain and death is part of the normal life. Because to go through sickness and pain and death is part of the normal life. Because to go through sickness and pain and death is part of the normal life. Because to go through sickness and pain and death is part of the normal life. Because to go through sickness and pain and death is part of the normal life. Because to go through sickness and pain and death is part of the normal life. Because to go through sickness and pain and death is part of the normal life. Because to go through sickness and pain and death is part of the normal life. Because to go through sickness and pain and Yes, right in the pro all this process, then probably some we will be downcasted. You see, Aaron, 可能比较坚强 Some people probably is far more stronger. 每一个人都会经历苦难 Every one of us have to go through problems and trouble. 最重要的是，在苦难当中，神与我们同在 The main thing, the most important thing, right in the midst of all this trouble and suffering, Christ is with us. 最重要的是，让我们在苦难当中经历神。The main thing, important thing, is right in the midst of suffering of trouble, we experience God. 经历神的同在，神的安慰，神的帮助。Experience the presence of God, the comfort of God, the help of God. 所以第三点，我想跟大家分享的是，在苦难中经历神。And I would like to share with you the third point: in suffering, experience God. 不要白白的受苦。And do not just suffer then or went through all this pain then for nothing in vain. 你要在苦难当中明白神的旨意。Right in the midst of suffering, know the will of God. 为什么神会让这样的事情临到你的身上 ？And why God allow these things then to happen in my life? 神要我们学习什么的功课 ？What are the lessons that God intended for me to learn? 我们要依靠神。We still remain have to be faithful and trust God. 我们要仰望神。And look up to God. 在二零一四年十月份的时候 ，In October of 2014. 呃，当我还在神学院里面读的时候 ，And during that time I was still in the seminary school. 我的外婆要做一个手术。My maternal grandmother went through have to go through a surgery. 那时候我的外婆是八十四岁。At that time, my maternal grandmother was eighty-four years old. 呃，她是因为身体里面有一个肿瘤，所以要做手术。Because、uh, inside her body has a tumor, then so she has to she had to go through a surgery. In a period of about five months, then he had been she had been consulting,、uh, seeing so many doctors. 有一个医生说，这应该是癌症。One doctor then、uh, diagnosed that that tumor is cancerous. What cancerous? It's also a malignant one. 那然后呢？另外一个医生说，这应该是良性的肿瘤。But yet another doctor diagnosed it that it was a benign tumor. 这个医生就说，呃，他可以不做手术，只要这个肿瘤不影响到他身体其他器官的运作。So, because this doctor diagnosed and found out, saying that it's a benign one, then as long as this tumor did not affect then how you know how her body then it should be perfectly fine not to go through the surgery. Because of her age then at that time was eighty four. 
So it's far better of at that age then not to go through another surgery. So initially we all thought family members thought to ourselves there's no need to go let her go through this surgery. But yet that tumor then later on then affected her blood pressure. And to the point, uh, one time that her pressure went as high as high as 200. Of course, it caused a danger then, a risk in her life then to have 200 uh, blood pressure. So ultimately, at the end, then she still, she went through the surgery. And right in that period, then for a few months, then I requested brothers and sisters to pray for my grandmother. But right in the time, right in the time that when my mother, my grandmother was going through the surgery, I had such a peace in me. And I clearly knew that this kind of peace cometh from the Lord. Uh, that day then, right, that very day then, I even went to the school then and to do some homework. After the surgery was over, my mother gave me a call. And also, you know, assured me, telling me then that it turned out, uh, grandmother, uh, you know, was over with the surgery and it turned out the tumor was a benign one. We thank God then, because prior to that, then we don't have the assurance to know about that. And not only that, that tumor then weighed up eight pounds. It's heavy. It was heavy. We thank God for His protection then and healing. Right in the midst of suffering and trouble, then God will grant us peace. We in the Lord, in Christ, and we have peace. If we happen not to experience that kind of peace, then it's time for us to reflect and turn to God and get close to God. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Dear brothers, sisters and friends Brothers and sisters, we can take heart and put all our burdens, our challenges in life and commit them to the Lord. In this world, we have tribulation, we have trouble. But Jesus assured us we can take heart. Why? Because Jesus himself has overcome this world. Jesus, after nailed and died on the cross, then he resurrected from the cross after three days. Then, 
cosmos, this word in its original text, and as in, in this world, or in the beginning of the world. So this world then will refer not only to humans as well as things matters in this world. John, first John chapter five verse nineteen. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. But yet we will not be afraid. Because if we truly believe in Jesus, we belong to God. Yes, in spite of all these sufferings, troubles, and hardship, that but yet, and right in our hearts, and we can still have peace. Because this kind of peace that transcends, that surpasses all understanding, then will be given to us then through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ lives in us. Amen. Amen. I wonder if you have heard this song. It is well with my soul. This is how it goes in the first verse. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lad thou hast taught me, to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And the second verse, Through trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. Do you know that the writer of this song that is un was under what circumstance that he prompted him to write this? That in 1871, then, right in Chicago, he lost all his, um, what he had, bankrupt. And two months, uh, two years later, he sent off his wife as well as four children then to England through a ship then for vacation. He didn't go. But yet then, the ship then wrecked them and sunk. It ended up all his four children died. Only his wife survived. Only his wife survived. 
It is actually under such circumstance when he was in utmost pain and sorrow then, suffering that he wrote this hymn, It is well with my soul. Later on, we will sing this hymn. Dear brothers, sisters, and friends, as we all know, our Jesus Christ is a victorious king. He already, he has overcome the world. Yes, even though in this world we have problems, we have trouble, we have suffering. But in Christ Jesus, we have peace. He will be the one to comfort us. No matter what kind of hardship you're facing today. Probably you or your family members are, are sick. Or you're probably looking for a school or even for a job. Or all the stress, the pressures in life. Even the stress then that you have them in relating to other, with others. No matter what kind of problem you have. We just have to put our focus in Jesus. That here it says, be still in, this, in Psalms. Be still and know that I am God. In Psalm 46 verse 4. Verse 10. You have to meditate that he is God. Go and meditate. Silence yourself. In problems, let us not try to use our words, uh, our own ways and try to resolve it. So in a way, try to resolve it in any possible way. But in, sp in spite of or the contrary, we need to silence ourselves before God. Get near God. Ask God. Seek God. Yes, at times brothers and sisters, they pray. But yet then, it's hard, you know, we hardly, totally commit all the problems to the Lord. At times we pray. And after we pray, we take back again all the burdens on us. It's probably because we men tend to be careful. Or at times we have little faith or we even doubt. <coughs> we doubt our God. Here I would like to encourage brothers and sisters and put cast all our burdens, our challenges then in life and commit, totally commit them to the Lord. It's only by totally committing to the Lord that that's the time we can experience the peace of Christ. With faith and let us look up to the Lord, commit to the Lord, and wait for the Lord. We have to come before the Lord and we have to pray and commit and wait to the one that, that who are the 
very, you know, that urges the very start of our faith that at the same time will pull us till the very end. By doing so that we will have, we will experience the peace of Jesus. May you say to the one to your left and to the right, in Christ Jesus, you have life. May each one of us always live in Christ Jesus. Because only in Christ Jesus we have peace. Let us bow our heads and pray. Our dear Jesus, we thank you because you have given us your own peace. You already said that your peace is not like what the world gives. In, in the middle of all our problems and hardships, in hardships and trouble, we know that we can take part. Because you have overcome the world. Right in you, Christ, we have peace. May you, Lord, yourself, then come to bless each one of us here. So that we will always be in the Lord. Because only in Christ Jesus we have peace. May the Holy Spirit comfort, console those who need it. At the same time, heals those who are broken hearted. And once again, encourage us, enthuse us. That we can continue to look up to our Christ Jesus. May Lord, may you help those who are already away from you, have stayed away from you. That they can once again turn their eyes to the Lord. So that in the midst of all the troubles and hardship, we can experience you. That we can experience that you are true and living God. And we can also experience your mighty works in us. So that our life there, we can not live in vain. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.